be at Timbers at 11. And then they have a concert the 21st, a week from today at 5 at St. Anthony's Catholic Church, and we're all invited to that. For those who know, know me, know that I like to talk, but I, <laughs> other than talking, I hope I'm a better listener. And uh, I heard a story this week from a gentleman while I was uh, waiting for my daughter to get done with volleyball, who spoke on uh, his love for his step, or his, it's not his parents, it's his in-laws, and how him and his wife take care of his in-laws. His father-in-law just passed away. He was blind and couldn't take care of himself. And now they're taking care of his mother-in-law, who's got dementia, and just fell and broke a hip, and they spend every other night, his wife goes to take care of the mother, and, and he goes and takes care of his mother-in-law on the other night. How special is that? I mean, that is just wonderful. Uh, God tells us in Exodus 20, 12, Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And in Matthew 15, 4, For God said, Honor your fa father and mother, and anyone who curses their father and mother is to be put to death. So I'm fortunate to have my parents left, and I pray that I honor them daily. And for the ones that have kids, I hope your kids are, are doing that for you. So let's pray and get things started this morning. Lord Jesus, we just pray for parents. Uh, Lord, we pray that we honor our parents and just show our love for them and everything that they've done for us. Lord, if we're a parent, I just pray that our kids are, are taking care of us now and when we become a seasoned saint. Lord, we just thank you for this, this beautiful weather. Lord, we thank you for the love that you show each and one of us. And Lord, I pray that each one of us return that love to you. Lord, we pray for Pastor Caleb as he speaks today. Uh, Lord, we just pray that his words are pleasing to your ears. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And would you please write for our opening hymn? Before we do that, I forgot to, <laughs> I forgot to announce to you. It's on the back of your uh, bulletin the uh, ecumenical concert um, celebrating the National Eucharistic Revival is next Sunday at St. Anthony's. And this um, includes, it says the Steuben, Festival, Steuben County Festival Choir, which is the choir that does the Messiah, um, and the Catholic Church Choir. Um, some of our members are involved in that. And uh, oh, it's going to be a great concert. We've been practicing for a long time. So if you don't have anything to do, next Sunday at 5 o'clock in St. Anthony's, come out. It's free of charge, no admission. Come and enjoy an hour to an hour and a half of wonderful music. Thank you.
one another. Good morning. Hi, Myrna. How are you? Good morning, John. Thank you. Travels for Cameron as he flies back to South Carolina today. 
Okay, uh, so Camp is he up here right now? He's in Indy right now. He's in Indy. All right. Right for that. Anything else? Yes, Camp. Right. Uh, so uh, they're getting ready to do the testing, and is it just elementary or is it? Um, it's third through ninth grade. Third through ninth grade is kind of what took the place of the I step test. So uh, must be praying for students for sure. Um, another thing that we uh, need to be praying for is the general conference of the United Methodist Church. Is taking place April 23rd through May uh, the 3rd. Debbie, it starts on your birthday. Okay. General Conference. <laughs> Maybe in honor of your birthday? <laughs> I doubt that. <it. laughs> so, uh, General Conference, uh, Methodists from all over the world will gather in uh, Charlotte, South Carolina, and they will be <coughs> meeting and praying and worshiping and discussing uh, lots of issues. We'll hear lots about it in the news. Uh, let's just be praying uh, that uh, the Lord would rule and reign. Somebody asked me what's going to happen at General Conference, and I said, only God knows. <laughs> and uh, so let's just be praying uh, for the delegates from Indiana and uh, uh, from all over the world as that takes place. The other thing is, as I was uh, thinking about the service, I, I have had long-standing prayers that I've prayed for years. Uh, and I, how many have had a long-standing <laughs> prayer that you've prayed for a long, long time? I, I feel like that we ought to pray for our long-standing prayers today. So when we get uh, to our uh, prayer time, uh, we're going to Make, make room to pray for our long-standing prayers. Would you join me in singing the prayer song? so many 
dream shattered. So many lives have been lost. God, I pray that you would minister there in the power of your spirit. Lord, we would think of the situation in the Ukraine as well. God, minister there also. Uh, Lord, we pray for Dick Wolford as he uh, goes uh, to uh, Cleveland Clinic and has this procedure on Thursday. Lord, I pray that that would go exceedingly well. Lord, just minister uh, there. May uh, you just touch Dick's body. And uh, Lord, I pray for uh, healing and wholeness. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Cameron Gentry as he travels. Uh, God, keep him safe. We pray for all the teachers and, and the kids that are doing ice, well, the testing that's taking place uh, in our schools this week. That God, just uh, give them help from heaven. Lord, be with Brandon. Uh, God, we continue to pray for Brandon. We pray that he would minister to Brandon in the power of your spirit. Uh, God, I pray for a safe place for him to be. I pray for your order and your purpose to be realized in his life. Lord, we would pray uh, today for general conference. Lord, we pray that you would minister uh, there in the power of your spirit. Uh, God, I, I pray that as the delegates meet, as the bishops preside, uh, Lord, as decisions are made, that those decisions that are made would be honoring to you. And uh, Lord, may those uh, leaders that gather together seek your face. God, rule and reign it, I pray. Lord, we pray for John and uh, Julie Stevens who are battling uh, lots of uh, sickness, John pneumonia and uh, Julie the crush. Uh, God, just minister, I pray to them, and bring you with the wholeness. And Lord, I know there are a lot of those even here uh, in the congregation today that are uh, struggling physically. Uh, Lord, meet them at the point of their need. Lord, healing and wholeness, we pray. Lord, all of us here in this place have prayers that we pray, uh, some of us for uh, months, some for years, some for decades. Lord, we just lift some of these long-standing prayers to you right now. Brothers and sisters, would you pray uh, for you? the thing that you've been praying for for a long time? It may be for a person, it may be for a situation, Maybe for yourself, uh, just offer to God, bring to God your long-standing uh, prayers right now. Thank you, Lord, that you hear us when we pray. Lord, we would also pray for our country, be with our leaders, and may they do justly, walk humbly with you, and may they love mercy, Lord. May they do what is right in your sight. Give them wisdom as they deal with difficult issues and, and situations. Now, Lord, teach us to pray as you taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have the privilege of having a mission today, and uh, Teresa Steele is here. Uh, Teresa, would you go ahead and come up? Over the last, has it been a year already that we not yet? Not yet. Uh, Teresa is with uh, Love Stu Ben, 
and, uh, and explain to us what Love Stuben is and, and how it got started. So Love Stuben is basically a replication of what they're doing in Fort Wayne. Um, I used to live here a long time ago, I grew up here, um, but then I lived in Fort Wayne for over 20 years um, and was involved there. They had a citywide prayer gathering and then during COVID, it kind of became hybrid online and in person. And during that time, it also rebranded to Love Fort Wayne. And so um, now that I'm up here and I'm back here to stay, I wanted to see that because I didn't see it here. And that's basically bringing the community together to pray and love on the community. And it has four basic pillars that we focus on. That's families, schools, pastors, and leaders. So how can we love our families, love our schools, love our pastors, and love our leaders, and just cover them in love? And then um, it has a basic format. We meet the second Wednesday at 7 a.m. at the Pleasant Township. So Trust. this is for early birds. Oh, yes, it is for early birds. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only an hour, though. So come, gather, pray over the student community, um, and just love on them. So. Uh, basic format is, um, and we want to involve the whole community too. So we have a different person open with prayer. We have different people representing different churches lead us in worship. Caleb led, led us in worship last month and um, in March, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Um, and then we also um, spend the bulk of our time in prayer, and then at the end we'll have a nonprofit share about their ministry just to help the community connect to the different resources. Right. So. Uh, and we're meeting where? We're meeting at the Pleasant Township Trustee Building. Okay. Uh, and so Leslie has uh, basically opened that up for us. Leslie's involved yes, here. Yes, Leslie Hall. And at the church. Uh, and. Uh, we want to pray for you. Uh, Caleb, would you want to come up and let's pray for Stu, Love Stu Ben and, uh, and for Teresa. And Tim was very integral in getting this started too. So he was in those beginning conversations. And then last September we launched and it's been going really well ever since. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I, I thank you uh, so much for Teresa's vision uh, for Love Stu Ben. For uh, folks from churches all over the county gathering and praying for families and for schools, for uh, churches and pastors, for government leaders, uh, Lord, for uh, even businesses, uh, Lord, uh, thank you for uh, Teresa's vision for that. Uh, Lord, I, I pray that you would increase the numbers of those who are praying. Uh, Lord, I pray. Uh, God, for answers to prayer. Uh, and Lord, I pray for your presence uh, for each each time we gather. God, I thank you for calling Teresa back to Angola and for uh, giving this vision, allowing her to experience this in Fort Wayne, um, and then for calling her home. Uh, we're so glad to have her here for the vision that you've given her for Angola, for Steuben County. And we pray that you'll continue to pour into her as she pours into the community. That you'll raise up leaders. That you'll give her connections and inspiration. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing the truth.
Lord, we give these tithes and offerings for your purpose. We give because we love you. You are first, now, and always. You may be seated.
We praise you constantly, for that is right. And you are worthy. Amen. God's messages can be hard to hear, especially when we don't listen. Now Saul, he didn't want to listen. But you know what? Paul did. How hard a nudge does it take before we listen? Now you can follow along with me in your Bibles, or you can use the Bibles that are in the pews. I'm not going to give you a page number because there's three different Bibles in the pews. And they all have <laughs> One of the things before I do the actual scripture, I was always curious, and maybe you noticed when I said it earlier, when did Saul become Paul? Well, it turns out that actually he always was. But while he was a Jew, only a Jew, he was Saul. But when he went to preach to the Gentiles, most of which were not Jewish or Jewish heritage, that's when he took the name, his Greek name, of Paul. That happened in this chapter. That's the turning point. And before this and in this chapter, most of the time, you will hear his name as Saul. But later on, he will be Paul. I'm going to be reading from Acts chapter 9, verses 10 through 22, and I'm reading from the NIV version. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tardis named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and leaders being before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he was suffer in my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished. Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priest? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Okay, are you ready? <laughs> well, I think we both should be. Now I am. <laughs> okay. Um, quick question. I know it'll sound rhetorical. It's not. Who is God right now? Creation. Okay. The mighty one. The mighty one. The the future? The teacher. The teacher, okay. In charge. In charge, that's great. Truth. Truth, that's awesome. Savior. Savior. Love. Love. Life. Grace. Light. Life. Okay, these are all good answers. They're not the answer I'm looking for. <laughs> but don't be hard on yourself um, because it's a hard leading question. Uh, the answer is too simple. You have to think like pre-elementary Sunday school. <laughs> what are the answers in pre-elementary Sunday school? God is love. Yeah, God is one answer that you can wow. give. Jesus is another answer that you can give. That's it. Those are the only answers in pre-elementary Sunday school. <laughs> right? Jesus. God is God. Right now. He was... He is, and he always will be. That should be very comforting. God is God. Uh, what does that mean? Who, who is not God right now? Jesus. Just all the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't it a good thing? Uh, there's two parties in this story that are important. One of them is Saul, who will be Paul. The other is Ananias, and he's the one who's going to Saul to open his eyes. Yes? yes. Um, both, before this, are positive which direction they're going. They actually have a great deal of faith. Saul wasn't faithless. He was a zealot. He was full of faith. Yes? It might, it might get a little eerie. Saul is absolutely certain that he's correct. I don't know how many of you are positive about being right. Um, don't nudge your spouse. Okay, this is not the time for that. You have to go home with them. <laughs> I don't know if you've met somebody who's just positive that they're right. Um, that's easier, right? When I say, are you always right? You go like, probably not. But when you go, did you meet somebody who is? You're like, definitely. It did. They're the worst. Okay. Uh, Saul so is positive that he's right. About what? Yeah. A about everything. But about his Jewish faith. About his Jewish roots. Who God is. Who God is. What God is like. He's positive. He's so positive that he's willing to do violence against those who are an enemy of what he considers the people of God. He's positive. He would call them terrorists. But what do we call them? Christians. Christians. We would call them Christians. Okay, the reason that I, I think this is really pertinent for today, for this moment in time, but I want you, I, I just want you to be patient with me. All right? Because everybody is going to hear a story about I, Iran's attacking Israel. Okay? Iran's attacking Israel. Each side, if you read their articles, and I do read each side, if you read each side, uh, both talk about terrorist attacks. Okay? Both, at the same time, write about one another in this life. Who's right? The great thing about that question is that you don't have to know. Because you aren't God. And God gets to stay being God, and we get to stay not being God. And that is just the best place to sit. The moment you decide that you know, we can make terrible errors. 
And Saul had to live the rest of his life with the persecution that he had for the Christian church that he would soon be a part of. He had all the scripture to back him up that he was right. He had conviction and a willingness to go as far as he needed to go to make sure that God's people were purified, that they stayed right, that they stayed true. Now, the reason that that's troubling is that he has a very real encounter with God uh, and sees the light of God. Jesus shows up and says, why are you persecuting me? That was last week we talked about it. Why are you persecuting me? Now, this is, uh, I mean, we read it and go like, wow, this is amazing. And this is the worst day of his life. The worst day is to find out that your 100% conviction was, was not true, was not right, wasn't quite right anyway. It's a hard day to have. <clears throat> what we can learn from this is not necessarily to, uh, to give up on conviction, but definitely to give up on deciding that we're right. You should remain, uh, remain faithful to the convictions that you have, to the faith that you have, allowing God to make changes, allowing God to make additions and subtractions. Yes? This is how to live wisely. That we're faithful to what God asks of us. Of what we know. So we go to the, the next person in this story. It's a very similar uh, situation. Because Ananias is not unaware of who Saul is. That's how notorious Saul was. And yet, he is sure that, he, that Saul is a bad guy. He's positive. Like, this cannot be right. And he's even talking to God this way, right? God is showing up to him in his dream. And he negotiates with God. Not unheard of. But uh, when God says, I want you to go to Saul. And I want you to talk to him. You're, you're actually going to give him back his sight. He's going to follow after me. And it's like, look, uh, you may have the wrong address. Like this, <laughs> it's just something to consider. You know, maybe there's a lot of people. Maybe you lost track. You got the wrong guy. A different Saul, perhaps. Saul of Tarsus kills Christians. You want me to go to But the answer is yes, I do. Now both, both of these men were willing to change. Were willing to say yes to God in spite of being sure that they were right just a second beforehand. They were willing to say yes. And they did. Because as Saul's eyes are open, he goes out and begins to preach right away. Right away. Okay, so because we're not God, we do not get the luxury of deciding who is right and who is wrong. Do you see that in this? Ooh, the crowd goes wild. Everyone's very excited about that. <laughs> Look, I think this is it's kind of a big cultural problem. We've made your opinion really important. And it's just not that important. <laughs> Not just you. Me also. Okay? Me also. Uh, your five-star review means a lot to Google. It, it shouldn't. It, it just shouldn't. We've gone way too far on your opinion, your, your ideas being as important as every other idea. And that's not real helpful. 
because it makes us feel self-important. When our opinion matters so much, it, it gives us uh, the wrong kind of pride. To the extent sometimes that we will put our opinion on other people. Even when they don't ask for it. <laughs> because we're used to everything else. Like, your phone's going to ask you your opinion six times a day. And you kind of get used to it. And you're like, probably everybody cares what I think. Probably. Because it's really important what I think. And we have this tendency to share that then with other people who are um, in the same boat. And so they're a little confused when you share your opinion, so they get ready with their own opinion right during yours, so they don't have to listen to it. They'll get ready with their own opinion. That's what we call a conversation now. I don't know if it is. But <laughs> you say what you think, I ignore that while I think of what I think, and then we just exchange that back and forth. <laughs> you see how this is, that, that can be a rough time. It's a rough way to build a relationship. But the reason I'm saying this is that we, we have gotten to a place where uh, being self-involved and being self-important is normal. But it, it doesn't serve us very well in following God. Because there's one opinion that matters, and that's His. There's one voice that makes a difference. It's His voice. Are you with me? Yes. That's better. All right. So a couple of weeks ago, about three weeks ago, I um, had something happen. So my wife's cousin had a dream about me going on this mission trip with her to Haiti. I was convicted by that. Because my entire life, my entire ministry is based on letting people know, like, when God speaks to you, you have to go after what God asks you to do. You believe Him, and you go, you, you hear the word, you trust it, and then you take action on it. That's what I teach over and over and over again. And what was bothering me was, you would never have known that she had that dream. I could have gone about my life. Okay, nobody knew except for she and us. However, I would have known my whole life. And God would have known my whole life. And so we took action in order to follow what we believed God was saying. And the more I prayed, the more I was sure. This is what God wants me to do. He wants me to get on a plane with a bunch of strangers and go to a place I've never been and don't really care about. <laughs> Well, I love the world. I have a lot of places that I'm really passionate about. I'm really excited about. We can talk about India a lot. I don't know anything about India. And I really don't know anything about the Dominican. I don't know about it. But he said it up. And his voice is the only one that matters. Now, something happened when I shared that I was going. One, uh, a bunch of money got raised and, and the trip got paid for. Very thankful for that. I so appreciate it. The other was, I got more texts and, and stop by that week going like, you know you could die. <laughs> Do you know that? Because they're listening to a lot of other voices. Because, you know, Haiti's on the news sort of a lot. Especially then. It lasts now because we have other attacks now, so it's okay. <laughs> Haiti's fine now because, you know, my rent's there. So anyway, uh, it's not true that it's as bad as it ever was. All right, so I said yes, but I had a lot of other input happening. And because they are listening to voices too, and so they're genuinely concerned about me. I appreciate that. I appreciate that you don't want me to die. However, um, I'm also aware that God said to go, and that if it came down to it, and that was my last trip, that that would be okay. Why? Because he said to go. And he's in charge. 
And so what I didn't tell you then was that I spent a little bit of time with my wife going like, hey, just so you know, like here's where our papers are. Because I, I, take, I keep track of all that. Our birth certificates, our, everything that we own or that is an important document. Like, I had to tell her where it was. And I don't normally do that on the chart. But I'm sort of like, I don't know, maybe it is the last one. I'm not in charge of that part. Only of color. And so I kind of let her know where stuff was, just in case. Or if I was detained, I'm like, you know, you should probably know where the birth certificates are. In the social security numbers, that would be helpful. The reason I'm sharing this with you is that when we're going about our lives, if we decide that we're not in charge, and we decide that God is in charge, which I think is a given anyway, but you can decide that you believe it. Are you with me? This is what we call being a believer. We believe that God is in charge and that we are not. And if God is in charge and you are not, then His voice is much, much more important than your voice, but also than any of these other voices. A well-meaning, well-meaning voices. Rarely does somebody give you their opinion because they don't like you. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't try to help your kids along because you're trying to get them in the wrong direction. You're trying to help. All these well-meaning voices in your life, you can decide that they are as important as God's or even more important. Have you done that before? Are you doing it now? God's voice has to be the most important voice for us to say we are believers. Not just in our head, in our thoughts, in our actions, in our words. We don't want to be believe, we don't want to be believers in title. We want to be believers in fact. So that makes sense to you? Do you love it? <laughs> now I'm not I'm not gonna stay on this for any amount of time at all. This is part of why I've said watch what you watch. If the news affects your mood and your actions, you are allowing that voice to be as important or more important than God's. That's not where you want to be. We've talked about it. You want to be a believer. I want you to be. Well, sometimes that means not listening to other things. <laughs> so it's helpful. It's helpful periodically to assess which voices am I allowing in my life? And are those affecting the way that I live? Are they godly? Are they God? We want to listen. We want to trust Him. And we want to obey. His voice has to be the loudest. It has to be the most important. This is how we are faithful, regardless of what season we're in. This is how we follow what God has asked us to do. Because otherwise, you'll have the dream as Ananias, and you will not go to Saul. Because you'll go, I heard about him. He will hurt me. You'll hear about the dream that you're supposed to go to Haiti, and you'll say, not right now, the political climate. Come on. If you wait for Haiti to be ready for you, you'll never go. And you don't know whether Haiti is the next Paul. You don't know. Only God does. He's in charge. And we get to submit to that and just 
Be thankful that we're not God. Be thankful that we don't have to manage all this or worry about all this. We just have to listen to trust and obey. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for how faithful you are, for your perspective, for your wisdom, for your understanding, that we don't have to be the one that have wisdom and understanding if we know you. We can actually just rely on you. And God, I pray that you would teach us that we would listen, that we would trust you, that we would obey what you say. That we would be believers. Truly, truly. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with us? We're going to say trust in you.
They were praying five times a day, but it was wrapping their schedule, their sleep schedule. I would just show up some morning and evening with them, to be with them, but I was learning something when I was with them. And it, it, it bothers me just a little bit that we have, we have a prayer meeting that's going to happen in our county, for our county, for our people. We say we care about them, and we'll go, it's too early. <laughs> well, it's too early. Is it too early? Will, will we be those people who go like, oh, man, I wish that really worked with my schedule? <laughs> what day is it? What day is it? Wednesday. So the next one is May 8th. May 8th, Wednesday, 7 a.m. Decide what's important and what's not. It was the most troubling thing to get there and pray with them at 6 a.m. every day, knowing that they had just worked all night. They got to sleep for two hours, and then they got to wake up and pray. And go, I mean, we can't make 7 a.m. work. Seriously, I was thinking about it while I was with them. Let's be a people who is faithful. That this will be important enough to make it a priority. Are you with me? Yes. May you be blessed this morning. May we be believers in fact. Not just by a label. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.